In the narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of how Surah Al-Kahf, the one who reads it on a Friday, would find his entire week enlightened up to the next Friday. So that is a narration. Another narration that is reported in a darimi Sunan al-Darimi, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the one who reads Surah Al-Kahf, and here reading does not just mean to recite it, to read it, to understand it, to know what it's all about, to believe in it, to have firm conviction, and so on, will be protected from the trials of the Dajjal. What is the connection of Dajjal? And Surah Al-Kahf. Inshallah, this afternoon I will try to explain this connection because it is extremely interesting. Very interesting. Firstly, when Dajjal comes, we will be tested in four ways. He will try to take our religion away from us. So that is the test of religion. By claiming that he is the God and you, we need to accept him as the deity. That is the trial of Dajjal. And Dajjal refers to two things. One is what we know is the Dajjal. But then there is what is known as the fitna of the Dajjal. Anything, anything at any time that is connected to any one of the tests that we have been taught the Dajjal will bring forth is also part and parcel of his force. It might not be him in person, but it's part of his force and part of the tests. So anyone trying to take your religion away from you is a Dajjal. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they will come to my Ummah. Dajjaluna kathabuna qariban min thalathin kulluhum yaz'amu annahu nabiyun wa ana khatamun nabiyyina la nabiyya ba'di. There will be so many Dajjals who come. A Dajjal is a liar. And the Dajjal, the plural of which is Dajjajila, used in the Arabic language, those who want to take your religion away from you. The Prophet ﷺ says, there will come people who will claim to be prophets. You should know that I am the final prophet. One narration says, 30 odd people will come. So, when the real Dajjal comes, the ultimate, the final, the sign of Qiyamah, that Dajjal comes, he will also want to take our religion from us. At that time, there will be famine, there will be drought, and he will say, I will give you, you all you got to do is say that I am the God, and, and you will not die of hunger. More like the economies of the globe, all depending on one major economy that tells you, if you accept us as the gods of the world, there will be no sanctions against you. And we will deal properly with you and we will make sure that your economy boosts and goes up. And then they come and tell you, if you do anything that we don't like, we will impose sanctions on you and you will die of hunger. Doesn't it ring a bell? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us security. So these are the forces of the devil that want to impose their own ideas and thoughts and beliefs on everyone else. They want to take the religion away from people. So it's important for us to be protected in that sense. We all need to cling, cling to the deen. Allah says in the Quran, Hold fast upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be disunited. May Allah grant us unity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to hold fast on this rope. The rope here referring to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the first test we made mention of that the Dajjal will be coming with is the test of religion. He will want us to disbelieve in Allah and believe in Him. And the hadith says, for anyone who has believed in Allah, as soon as they look at him, they will see on his forehead the letters Ka, Fa, and Ra, depicting that this one is actually a kafir. The second test that Jal will come about with, we touched on it just now, 
the test of wealth where people will be poor people will be suffering there will be famine there will be drought but he will have control over what he will have control over the water on the globe and he will have control over irrigation so you believe I'm a God I make you rich I will allow water to get to your land when it gets to your land you will be able to irrigate and then the produce will grow so you believe in me as a God and you have produce so that is a test of wealth the third test he will come with is the test of knowledge test of knowledge in that what is right will be considered wrong and it will be believed secondly those who are upright and knowledgeable will be considered ignorant and those who are ignorant will be considered the most knowledgeable to the degree that all those with knowledge will be fought and eradicated until there will be nobody with knowledge left on the earth except those who are ignorant considered to be extremely knowledgeable and people will follow them that is also in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how knowledge will be taken away it will be taken away by the death of the scholars and when the scholars have gone people will start considering those who have no knowledge as knowledgeable and when that happens and these people start issuing rulings they will be misguided and they will misguide others and the helm the height of it will be when the Dajjal comes what is wrong will be believed as being correct take a look at the power of the media today the media has the capacity and already has worked in that direction of making us hate our brothers in the Middle East solely because we believe they crooks and we believe they this and yet we don't realize the source of the story is someone who's just playing with our minds firstly when the Quran says if a believer who is sinful comes to you with news of someone else make sure you authenticate it firsthand before you believe it otherwise you may believe something that will result in regret for yourself and you may accuse people of what they're not guilty of what if someone who's not a Muslim comes to you? Someone who's an enemy. We're not talking of ordinary non-Muslims who sometimes might be more truthful than some Muslims. May Allah safeguard us and grant us truthfulness. But we're talking of people who are known as outright enemies of Islam. They are out there to get you. We believe their television stations. We believe their news. We believe their newspapers against our own brothers. So we are lost. And you find in the Muslim Ummah, if we are to ask any Muslim who are the worst leaders in the world, they'll recite the names of 20 Muslim leaders and that's it. There we are. May Allah protect us. Wallahi, there are, at times we don't know what's going on and our information is from Dajjal. Our information is from forces similar to that of Dajjal. So there will be a test when the Dajjal comes, a test of what? Knowledge. He will take it away from us and he will make us believe that what we have is knowledge when it is not. We need to be worried. And the last test that is made mention of the test of power where people would love to be powerful and they want to have authority. So in order to gain a little bit of power, they begin to worship the devil because the Jal will instruct them to do that. Today you have the Satanists, you have the Freemasons. What do they do? Wallahi, they worship Iblis himself personally. And what does he do for them in return? He makes them feel the power. They feel it. And he can toss and turn people who are standing in front of them just because they have sacrificed for him. So he gives them a power and they become powerful, solid people, strong. They can control your mind because there is the life of the unseen that they have sacrificed for. So they will murder people and spill blood in order to appease the devil so that they can become people who can control. Most of the singers, 99% of the pop stars that you have out there belong to this category. They all sacrifice doves backstage. They all engage in satanic behavior. They all belong to a cult. 
And all of them are promoting immorality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Their names are not fit to be mentioned in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we know who they are. And if you take a look at the way they clothe themselves, they are sucking in our children and they are sucking in some of us in an unbelievable way. And we still want to listen to all that music and play it in our cars, not realizing this is with the assistance of Iblis himself. And he is controlling our minds. And we appease ourselves by saying the lyrics are good. Na'udhu Billah. Allah safeguard us. Those lyrics for your information are becoming dirtier and filthier and more satanic as days pass. And we are still allowing it to go through our ears. So imagine what will go through the ears of our children. And they will say, Dad, you're living in the 60s. May Allah safeguard us. It's something to be worried about, to be concerned. We are in the month of Ramadan. We read Surah Al-Kahf, but sometimes we achieve nothing out of it because we don't even know what we are meant to be achieving out of it.